By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today, ah oh man, you know, this is a crazy game. It's a crazy game. It's a revised only, so both decks only consist out of revised cards. Now, as you know, I really enjoy revised because A, it's my alpha. I started playing with it. And B, it's affordable, so it's perfect if you want to try Crazy Brews, and we have two for you today. One of them is Green Ramp, featuring, I believe, a flying carpet. So this deck actually has a flying carpet in it, so that's going to be fun. And it's playing against a, a green and white Titania's Song deck, and it's actually called Titania's Rings. Now, I have a de deck picture of both of these decks, so I'm just going to show them to you, do a little bit of deck tech. But if you can't wait for the actual games, you know what to do. Check the timestamp below. Click on the timestamp and that will take you straight to the games. The deck that my opponent is playing is Green Rampy Rampy and you can probably see why it has its name there. It's got four Lanawar Elves and four Wild Grove. So what he wants to do is just get them out ASAP, start ramping, playing out Howling Mines, drawing tons of cards, not really minding the opponent to draw a lot of cards as well because he's just going to pull ahead with stronger spells. I guess that's kind of the idea. And of course, having that single aspect of wolf, that looks really nice. Uh, I've just, I just have to smile a little bit because I'm thinking, okay, what if you put the aspect of wolf uh, on your juggernaut? That would be nice. But what about if you put on one of those fat forces of nature? Because we see a full play set of force of natures in this deck. So when I look at this, it's beautiful. And I just think the flying carpet is just so incredibly funny. Just putting, putting your force of nature on a flying carpet it's that idea it's just so cool and then we see two aladdin's rings and that's really funny because you know what the deck that i'm playing also has two aladdin's rings and how often does it happen that both players on both sides of the table are playing with this well let me put it mildly not so fantastic artifact so uh, this is the deck of my opponent uh Yup uh Yup, great deck Thank you for bringing it to the channel. Now let's take a look at my deck. This is the deck that I am playing today. It's called uh, Titania's Rings. Obviously that um, name comes from the two Titania songs and the two Aladdin's Rings. Now I came up with to, to start brewing this when I played against a fellow YouTuber and a friend of mine, Baron Nick. And um, Baron Nick, you know, we just played a game and all of a sudden he came up with this, he played this very interesting Titania song deck that wasn't your typical Titania song deck. Now, maybe you're thinking, typical Titania song? I never see Titania song. Well, the typical brew is with a parfait style. If you want to see more about that, you can actually check out uh, wakwak.se and they've got a pretty nice example of what I mean. But for this deck that uh, Baron Nick was playing, it was it looked a little bit like this, but it wasn't revised only. So this deck, I really have to give props to Baron Nick for inspiring me to build this brew. Now, let me first explain to you what Titania's Song does, because it's an enchantment. It's one green and three, and it reads, all non-creature artifacts in play lose all their abilities, their usual abilities, and become artifact creatures with toughness and power both equal to their casting cost. If Titania's Song leaves play, artifacts return to normal just before the untap phase of the next turn. Exactly, it says the next turn. So even when I play out my Titania song and in response my opponent immediately casts a disenchant getting rid of the song, it still means that my artifacts will be creatures for the entire turn and I can still swing in. Now as you can see I'm playing with tons of artifacts because of this and my uh, Aladdin's rings are kind of my top end value. So in a, in a perfect world I will be able to get all my artifacts out with my ramp. So you see I've got birds and I've got Lander Elves and I've got Channel. Channel can be really strong but also really risky in here. Um, and I will play out all my big threats. Then the next turn, my, and with big threats I mean my big artifacts, and then next turn I will play my Titania, um, Titania song followed up by an Armageddon. Because with the Armageddon I'm hoping to kind of block my opponent completely. So uh, Titania song and then into Armageddon, and then the whole field is free for me to just boom, you know, attack and trample over my opponent. Now, what's important here is what am I going to do prior to that? So I'm playing with four uh, books, uh, JM Day Tomes, to just draw a lot of cards as quickly as possible together with my ramp. I'm hoping that will enable me to get those cards on the table quickly. I'm playing with a single Wrath of God and a balance to when I get too far behind to kind of clean up the mess. 
Um, I've got, of course, three discs and, you know, I'm, I'm willing to use a few of the discs. I don't mind as long as I have, you know, the whole setting ready for my uh, Titania song. That's really where I'm working towards. And that's why for me, brewing with white was so important. That's also something that I saw in Baron Nick's deck, that white color really, you know, added that control element uh, to the deck. So yeah, um, um, that's about it. If you're interested in that match against uh, Baron Nick, by the way, I'll put a link in the description below so you can check the description. He also has a nice unit, um, unit. he also has a nice YouTube channel. Uh, and I will also place a link to his channel in the description below as well. Okay, let's, um, let's go to the games and see how these silly decks uh, do against one another. Game number one and uh, the player with the green ram deck, my opponent Yoop is sitting on the left. Look at that. Lanor Elf turn one and I'm sitting on the right playing with my Titania's rings deck. Also playing a Lanor Elf, so a bit of mirror match here. And of course we both have a lot of ramp. So we both have eight one drop ramp cards. He cannot find a wild grove here or another elf. Neither can I, can I find a birds or can I? Yes, there is a birds of paradise. So that's good for me. And that's Savannah and another attack here. And oh, there's a howling mine, which is good for me. But remember, it's a tactic of my opponent to just get tons of cards, get tons of mana ramp going and play out forces of nature. And look at that, it's a bit hard to see, but I'm playing a book. Yeah, making a little bit more space here, playing a book to draw some cards and playing an elf. So really good start for me. And there's a wild growth by Yoop and another howling mine. Oh, that's crazy. Just going to draw three cards here. And I guess my book is pretty useless with all those howling mines because I'm drawing a lot of cards anyway. Look at all the mana. I have seven mana at my disposal at turn four here. And it looks like Yoop has a little bit of a mana problem here with the lance, not finding his third and fourth uh, land drop. Let's see what I can do. Tapping four here. Mm, okay, five, six. I seem to be a little bit... Oh, I'm playing a channel. That's probably why I'm doing a lot of counting because I'm trying to figure out how much mana do I need, how much mana can I pay for. Maybe I want to keep a white open for a Swords to Plowseers or possibly a Disenchant. So maybe we're already going to see a Titania song here very early in this matchup. I mean, with the channel, I put it in there so I could just get my Aladdin's rings out, or in this case, I guess, a Nevenerals disc. Of course, it still comes into tap, uh, into play tapped, taking six life here. And it does mean I have a 4-4 four, four book, but if I attack, and look at that, I'm actually taking extra life because I want that untapped Savannah. If I attack with my book, it's a 4-4. Four, four. Remember, my opponent's artifacts are also creatures now. So he has two 2-2s. Two, two he has two grizzly bears there. And I'm actually playing a sword to Plowsiers over one of them because I didn't want to trade my book for a double block. Oh, there's a giant grove. Oh. Oh, and now that I'm looking back at this, this is actually a pretty big mistake. I should have just attacked with the book um, because the, um, the swords is an instant spell anyway. So on response of that giant grove, I could have play the swords so that was a little bit of a mistake oh and this is interesting i'm actually playing an armageddon here because i have so much mana to my disposal that's probably my way of thinking and that forced in my hand but i mean there is that flying carpet on youp side of the table which is now also just a 4-4 creature so remember because of the song all those artifacts that you see are actually creatures equal to their casting cost so that flying carpet is a 4-4 the howling mine is a 2-2 and now he's killing my birds with just a single blow of one damage, hurricane for one. And let's see what I can do. Going through my graveyard, probably have a regrowth in hand. And I have four mana to cast, like the book, but of course I have to tap two first for my regrowth, taking back my book, hoping to deploy that next turn. And it looks like that Yoop is pretty stuck. Remember, he has a lot of expensive cards in his deck and he lost all his lands. Now I'm playing a book here, a 4-4, four, four, so that means I've got two 4-4s. Four, four, so that might give me an advantage. Of course my opponent does have those giant growths. Playing another bird, actually a new bird after those other two died to the hurricane. And passing turn, and there we see another howling mine. So again, it's, it's not ideal for me to attack here. 
I am doing it though, so maybe I have something in hand. Have of course now that Birds of Paradise to generate white mana for me. Maybe I have Disenchant or Swords. And that's probably why my opponent chooses not to block. Tapping 3 for a Basalt Monolith, which is now a 3-3 creature. It is a Hill Giant. And there we see Yoop tapping 4. There's a Juggernaut. Not too bad, actually. I can I can block it on my bezels. Oh, and he's attacking with the flying carpet in response, playing a disenchant over the flying carpet. And I think patience is the name of the game here. I just have to pass and wait so I can block with the monolith. That's exactly what I'm doing. And there it happens. Probably going to trade it. Yeah, going to trade here for the monolith. And there's another Grizzly Bears, another Howling Monster. He has three 2-2 two, two creatures now and that Elf. And I'm just passing turn. There we see another Hurricane. And maybe I should play it a little bit more aggressive at this stage. Just attacking with both of my 4-4 four, four creatures. And just... Okay, I'm attacking with one here. And I'm trading them away for the two Howling Mines. Maybe I want to keep my disc alive because remember what I can always do is disenchant my own song and then I can activate my disc if you know if things get uh, too hot in the kitchen you know if it gets like a, a force of nature out or something there it is there's a force of nature now while I'm saying all of this I do not have a white mana source so even if I would have uh, even if I have a disenchant in my hand now I cannot play it out look at that playing another disc but it comes into play tapped, so that's of course a huge disadvantage, or else I could have double blocked the force on two discs. And this is going to be risky. It's probably going to swing in now for eight trample damage. Remember, it has trample. Ay, 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 what can I do? I don't think it's a good thing to block here. I'm deciding what to do because I can maybe buy some time by putting my elves in front of the bus, but it has trample, so it's only going to save me one damage. Deciding to block with one elf, interesting choice here. Going to two life, so I'm trading my elf basically for a life here. Probably because he has that other Lanawar elf on the battlefield as well. Oh, and of course that 2-2 two -two Howling Mine, so I need my blockers here. Gonna attack double blocking now with the disc. At least I'm still alive. And there's a Zavanna. Oh no, oh no, there's another one. I think this is end game unless I have a Swords in hand. He's actually attacking, I'm just gonna trade it here. Maybe I have a Swords or a Wrath of God. <clears throat> Excuse me, or a Wrath of God. Oh, this is nice, playing an Armageddon. <laughs> oh, oh no. He's actually showing me that he had a uh, Aladdin's Ring in hand. I'm showing that I had a Balance in hand. Oh my goodness, really? Uh, I thought it was toast. Really toast. Um, okay, well, thank you, Armageddon. Uh, that was really lucky. So that means that uh, the green Stompy Stompy deck, uh, or green Stompy, green Rampy Rampy deck actually here lost the first game, uh, but we have a second game to come, and we actually don't have any sideboards, so we're just going to continue to game a number two. Game number two here, and uh, yeah. That was a really interesting way, way to win. Uh, just to clarify, if you play the uh, Force of Nature, if you're not really aware what Force does, uh, you have to pay an upkeep cost of four green. So with that Armageddon, he couldn't pay the upkeep cost anymore. And if you don't pay the upkeep cost, you take eight damage in your upkeep. And that would have killed him. Uh, let's see, wow, okay. This is also a very explosive start on both sides, actually. We see two Lanaware Elves on the side of Yoop and an Elfish Archer swinging in now. And we see two Lanaware Elves on my side, but also a Soul Ring and a Disrupting Scepter that I'm actually using right now to empty his hand. So he's throwing away that Force of Nature. And th that Force is actually not that far away because the casting cost of a Force is only six. But yeah, he has another one. Okay, um, that's a problem. And I do really like this. Just this, this simplicity of this deck is just ramp, 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 Force of Nature out and go. I mean, that's really like the old school uh, way of playing. Um, and with old school, I'm just referring to when I just started playing in the in the 90s, where these decks, you would see these decks often, and they would actually win a lot as well, because it was really like difficult to deal with these 
creatures, even though there were a lot of answers. I guess we were just in a different mindset back then. But look at this, I'm already on eight. Uh, I've played my song, by the way, uh, just to generate a lot of blockers, I guess, against the force of nature. I can now block on double book because those are now creatures. And then I have two four fours. That's exactly what I'm doing here. So that means force of nature goes, but I'm already on eight life and my opponent is still on 20. There is a lot happening in this game. And remember, the Soul Ring and the Disrupting Scepter are now a 1-1 creature and a 3-3 creature. And my opponent has that 2-2 Howling Mind. So I'm attacking right now, maybe expecting some kind of double block. Do I have, and look, it's probably have a Disenchant here, Disenchanting the Howling Mind, meaning he also loses his Lana or else, because what you do after blockers are, are um, declared, but before damage is dealt, you play that Disenchant on the Howling Mind. And that way, my Disrupting Scepter only gets the damage from the Elves. In this case, just one damage. Attacking now with the Elvis Archer and the Lanor Elves. Am I gonna chump? It looks like I am chumping with the bird, having enough mana anyway, and trading the Lanor Elf off here. And of course, it's hoping for me that my opponent doesn't top deck um, another Force of Nature. Because, I mean, he's playing with, not just with one or two, he's playing with four of them, a full playset. And finding another... Wild Grove, that's not gonna help him. I can attack him here with my 3-3 Disrupting Scepter, it seems, as he only has his Elfish, Elfish Archer to block on. And these games are just insane because that uh, Titania song is just so incredibly funny to play with. Look at that, I'm going very aggressive here, wanting to deal him the full five damage, but I'm taking a huge risk because if my opponent finds a big creature, I, I don't have that Swords anymore. We're both top decking, by the way. And he's on 10 life now. I'm on 8. And he's counting. That is not a good sign. Oh, that's game. That is game. And I'm showing him that I had that Wrath of God as a backup. And that's why I played that Swords to Plowsiers so um, in such a nonchalant way on his Elvish Archer. Uh, wow, that means it's 1-1 one, one here. Well done, you put that Hurricane spell. Getting me low enough just playing a huge Hurricane. That's also a way to win. Uh, and you see that in some green stompy decks as well in old school where they where they board in a hurricane for that reason. Uh, okay, so we're gonna get get a game three. Nice, exciting. Game number three, one one. And yeah, here we go. At least I'm on the play. Uh, that was a really nice hurricane uh, that got me there. It looks like I'm still shuffling. Um, and what's interesting is that actually in the second game I felt more confident that I was going to win than uh, at a certain point in that first game where I was just really really lucky top decking that Armageddon and look at that playing a basic planes here so that means no Lunar Wells for me or no Birds of Paradise and there is a Lunar Wells again for my opponent and let's see can I find a green mana interesting I did keep the hand so I'm sure I had a reason to do that and there is a Howling Mine, and that is probably going to help me draw into some green mana here. I do like the idea that Yupis is just sticking to his game plan, as am I actually. And there is a Swords of Plowsiers over the Elves, trying to kind of stop the ramping a little bit because I am afraid of finding uh, a Force of Nature against me in like a turn 4 or turn 5. So trying to divert that with that Swords on that Elf, finding a Birds of Paradise here and a green mana, that's very important. Tapping two, playing a Disenchant over one of the Howling Mines, so that means that I drew three cards and he's only got to draw two cards now. That's always something as a Howling Mine player that can be very frustrating, so let me know in the comments if you're a Howling Mine player too. Uh, when you play out your Howling Mine, you think, okay, it's a nice card, we'll get to draw cards, and your opponent takes the extra card and disenchants yours. Uh, in the meanwhile, we see a Juggernaut here hitting the table. Beautiful creature, 5-3 powerhouse, and that could be a problem for me. And there is a Regrowth over a Disenchant, playing a Disenchant probably over the Juggernaut. And tapping one green here for a Lanower Elf. So this was a really good turn for me. And he's got five mana now, so almost at crucial six mana, playing a Hurricane. And, and those Hurricanes are doing a great job. I mean, killing me in game two, but I think in game one and game two, and now in game three, just they keep killing my birds. Very annoying. Stop killing my birds, you. They deserve some peace. They're high up in the sky next to, next to an, a nice tropical island. Playing a Basalt Monolith here. 
tapping for another juggernaut with an aspect of wolf that is really sweet but in response of the aspect of wolf i'm sorry playing a sword it does mean that Yup gets a ton of life here now he's on 24 and let's see what I can do. Untapping here with six land. I mean, I need to get some action here. And we haven't seen a single Aladdin's Ring, by the way, at least not in the actual game. And I have enough mana now to cast one, so maybe it's coming. Basalt Monolith can give me three colorless mana, and I've got seven, so ten mana in total. Tapping for eight here. Oh, there it is! Aladdin's Ring! Okay, man. And, and this, the, the song that you should play while watching this deck is of course Beyonce put a ring on it and oh you you ah! sorry okay so he's playing a desert twister over my ring which is very flavorful two cards from the same set by the way so I have to give you that and of course I mean I killed this creature with the aspect of wolf so I guess we're even now playing a savannah having eight mana as again I play with two rings maybe I have another ring in the deck I am counting my land, my lands, so that's a good sign. Tapping all of it, I think that's nine mana. Or eight, okay, I guess it was eight. And I'm casting here a disc and a book, the Jadum Tome. And there's Aladdin's ring on his side of the table. That is pretty insane. And the question now is, am I going to use my disc just to get rid of that ring? I mean, I don't really need the book to draw cards anyway with that Howling Mine. But tapping to disenchant on the ring. Ay, 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 ay. That's bad news for my opponent here. Tapping four. There is the song. That means I can swing in with eight here. And my opponent goes down to 16. Now, unfortunately, we still haven't seen a um, Aladdin's ring. And that's what I'm personally going for, seeing that Aladdin's ring. Now let's see, I mean, that's why I built the deck. That was the big idea behind it, but it doesn't always happen. And remember that Basil Monolith untaps as normal because it's now just a 3-3 three, three creature. So I don't have to pay 3 mana to untap it. Let me know what you think of Basil Monolith in general, by the way. You don't see it being played often in decks. Of course, we've got the uh, Power Artifact Monolith combo, but apart from that... Uh, people understandably choose for Mana Vault, but in what decks do you think a Basalt Monolith could, could work? And Yup is counting his cards here. Am I going to see a Force of Nature? Yes, there is a Force of Nature. But he is already on 9, so can I actually, can I do it? Attacking with everything here. Probably going to block one of my 4-4s. Four Blocking my 4-4 four four here. And... Is it enough? Let's see. 4, 8, 11. Yep, it's enough damage here. Killing my opponent. Oh, wow. Okay, so I guess I've won this uh, victory. I've won this uh, this match. Yup, thank you for bringing your fantastic deck to the table. Um, and Baron Nick, thank you for inspiring me to make this Titania Song deck. Um, by the way, I will have a link right now to that game where I played against him. It was a lot of fun, and you can also check out his channel. Uh, for now, thank you for watching Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by leaving a like, um, leaving a comment, sharing this on your socials. Go do it. Go do it. Subscribe if you're not a member yet. Uh, or don't. I mean, if you're still not a member, you probably have your reasons. And you can also support me through Patreon. And I'm super happy with all my patrons because they help me keep this channel going. Uh, I recently was able to get an external hard drive thanks to the support of the patrons. So thank you for that. As a matter of fact, let's take a look at the end scroll.
Doctor's figure to somber physique. 